So you finally grew tired of Windows or the Mac OS for whatever reason and you're fancying a bit of a change of pace and you're not too sure which Linux distro to hop over to. So in this video I'm going to be doing an installation guide and a slight review on Linux Mint. You can head over to the website and click on the download button here. Now with Linux Mint it does come with a couple desktop environments. You get one called Cinnamon, Mate and XFCE. Now there are a couple of the community made ones but these are the official ones we're going to be looking at right now. Now a quick rundown over what each of these are. Cinnamon is going to be your more power intensive Windows relatable desktop environment. Mate is going to be more of your, like well like it says here, it's more stable, robust, traditional. It They all look the same, I think that's something you should take. Like. None of them are outrageously different than each other. So whichever one you pick is going to be a familiar environment. XFCE is the lightweight one, so if you have a less powerful computer, you're going to probably want to go for the XFCE edition, a more modern computer, anything above kind of really old components, cinnamon should be just fine, and mate as well, absolutely fine. So. So in this video, I'm going to be installing Linux Mint in a virtual machine. However, all the steps I'm going to be going through will be exactly the same on hardware. So what you're going to want to do if you're installing it on hardware is just make a bootable USB with something like Rufus. So for the virtual machine setup, we're going to click on new. I'm going to call this one Mint. And it already selects Ubuntu here, which is the distribution Linux Mint is based off of, so that's fine. I'm going to give it four gigabytes of RAM, a virtual box disk image. I'm going to give it dynamically allocated, which is slightly slower than a fixed size, but with dynamically allocated, it only gives it as much space as the operating system needs up until a set point. Whereas with fixed size, it just gives it all of the it just gives it the, the amount of storage that you specify right out of the box. So I'm just going to click on next and I'm going to give it 20 gigabytes. 20 gigabytes is more than enough for Linux Mint. And there we go. I'm going to navigate into settings. To system, I'm going to deselect floppy, move that down here. Select hard disk, move that up to the first in the boot order. So when we boot, so when we go through the installation, and we're finished, we can reboot straight into the operating system without having to exit the virtual machine to go back into this settings menu to deselect optical. Because when we boot up, it's going to see there's nothing on the hard disk, and it's going to go to the second boot option, which is optical. And then when we reboot, obviously, the operating system will then be installed on the hard disk. We're going to be doing a BIOS install today because we are not using more than two terabytes of storage or having more than four partitions. Click on processor here. I'm going to give it two cores. I think two cores should be fine. I'm going to crank up the video memory up to 128 megs. And I'm going to select VBox VGA as the graphics controller just to enable us to be able to see it in full screen. I'm going to click on empty here. Click on the list, this little disk icon and we're going to select our disk file. Actually, mine's just appearing right here, so I'll just click it there. And there we go. As you can see, I'm going to be installing the XFCE version, but the installation is exactly the same for Cinnamon or Mate, so there's nothing to worry about there. I'm going to click on Start. We're going to start Linux Mint. Okay, so now we're booted onto the ISO. Let's see if we can increase the resolution. Uh, display. There we go. I'm going to keep this configuration. And there we go. Now we're booted onto the live ISO. So if you're doing this on hardware, this is completely on the USB stick. So any edits you make on here, whatever you do on here, it's just going to be making it to the USB and it's not going to affect anything on your hard drives, on your storage devices, any computer at all. So this is very useful if you're just testing it or you want to get to grips with how, how different things work. So. 
it's good to know just in case you're not too sure if you want to do it, if you want to replace your host operating system, but this gives you the chance to experiment with it, do whatever you want, and be fear free of breaking anything critical. But obviously this is an installation guide, so I'm going to install it, show you the simple steps to do that, and then we'll just go over a few features that come with Linux Mint. Gonna double click the icon up here, select your language, English, uh, English UK, you can uh, type here to make sure your keyboard is, keyboard is working properly, which I advise. You don't want to leave anything out with this installation. I'm going to click continue. We are going to install multimedia codecs. Multimedia codecs are basically extra bits of software that you will most likely need. So if you're going to be using this as a daily driver, I do recommend installing this as it just comes with some pretty useful bits of software. And now here, I'm going to click on Erase Disk and Install Linux Mint, which will, erase, will, which will completely erase our VirtualBox disk drive. What you can do is go to Advanced Features. So it does give you that option there. So if you're on a laptop or something like that, you'd want to encrypt, encrypt your disk. Um, you, but you can also resize the, the, you can also resize the partitions yourself in case you're install it to a disk where you want to or where you have two operating systems for example or you want to install this alongside another partition with different files on or whatever but in this one we're just going to erase the disk and install it click install gives us a brief overview of what it's going to be doing that's fine with me select your time zone I'm London and now we get to fill out some information so I'm going to call it Joseph, I'm going to call it the Mint Box. I'm going to choose a secure password. And require my login to, and require my password to log in. We'll just leave it like that. Uh, we don't want to encrypt uh, the home folder, but you can do that if you wish. So if you're on a computer that multiple people use or you're on a laptop, it's probably a best best idea to encrypt your home folder. You can also choose login automatically, but mm, it's not as secure as requiring your password. So as your system's installing, Linux Mint will show you a couple of things on this little slideshow, but it shouldn't take too long to install, so I'll be back with you once it's finished. Alright, that was pretty quick. That was probably about five, six, seven minutes. So what we can do is continue testing if you're in the middle of something or you want to see about a couple of features, but we're just going to restart. And now what you'd do if you're installing it on hardware is you'd remove the installation medium as it says here and then press enter. Since I have hard disk selected, as the first in the boot options in my virtual machine, I can just press enter. Now Linux Mint should boot up into a login screen. So now you enter your password. And there we go, we have now booted into our Linux Mint system. Congratulations, you've just installed Linux Mint. Not too difficult, eh? Now, do not dismiss this welcome box here, it is quite useful. What you can do is navigate over to the first steps here and you can enable things like dark mode, you can change the coloured icons of stuff, but what most of you will probably want to pay attention to, I think, is the ones down here. So we have system snapshots. So this will basically take a snapshot of your system and you can specify how often it does this or what it takes snapshots of. Now this driver manager here will be extra important if you're running an NVIDIA GPU. 
it will probably, I think it does notify you if you're running an NVIDIA GPU, but you want to make sure you're running the NVIDIA blob driver. I think it's called NVIDIA 470, something like that. You want to be running that as opposed to the open source graphics drivers. Now, it does depend on how new your NVIDIA graphics card is. If you're running a, a 900 series or higher, I definitely, it's a must have that you use the NVIDIA blob driver. However, with the older NVIDIA GPUs, they tend to fare a bit better with the open source drivers, but I still recommend you use the proprietary one. It's just better performance, less glitches, less crashes, less artifacts. The blob driver just works a lot better. Now down here, we have the update manager, which is actually down here on the bottom tray with the orange symbol there, letting us know that we have some up that we have some updates pending. We also get the option to launch up system settings, which is just system settings, and the software manager, which is basically our our app store. So we can go in there to install different programs and bits of software. I will go into that in a little bit. And finally, we have the firewall control. So if you're going to be using this as a daily driver, you're probably going to want to launch firewall and change a few settings in there. Now, if you did accidentally close this, what you can do is go down here to your start menu and type in welcome. And it comes up right there and it opens up just like it did when we booted this up. You can disable this on startup, which is what I'm going to do, and close it. So, Linux Mint. It is, in my opinion, a wonderful Linux distribution, especially for people just moving over to Linux who want to get to grips with... Um, with the way Linux is and the different ways to do things. So the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously update your system. I think that goes for pretty much anything nowadays. You want to click OK there. It's going to process the updates and tell you which ones they are. Now we do get the option to switch to a local mirror. I'm not too bothered right now, but switching local mirrors will improve internet speeds depending on where you're located. So we're going to apply the update here enter your password. It's kind of like the administrator requires administrator privileges on Windows. It's just a lot more secure on Linux. As you can see here, we have a lot of updates here. I'm not going to update just yet, as I want to see what kind of software comes shipped with Linux Mint as soon as you download the ISO, and what versions they are. So first of all, let's navigate to Firefox, which is the default web browser that comes with Linux Mint. And in my opinion, Firefox is one of the best browsers out there. Though the best browser will have to be LibreWolf, which you can check out if you want to. So we've got the usual Firefox junk. You've got your recommended by pocket. You've got your shortcuts to dodgy websites and just the default settings, really. Though we do get DuckDuckGo as a default search engine. So that's a bonus, right? Let's navigate over to settings. Yeah, see, it's just the usual Firefox settings. You do get a custom homepage, which sends you to the Linux Mint website, but that's easy enough to change. You can just select Firefox Home, and that's fine like that. You, you know, disable uh, Pocket, disable shortcuts, whatever you want. You've also got privacy and security here. Uh, select standard by default, but you do have the option to change it to strict or custom, you know. Whatever you want, really. I'm not going to delve into that too deep right now. But what I am going to do is just see what kind of... What version of Firefox we are running right out of the box. So this is without any updates. Fresh ISO download from the Linux Mint website. So we can navigate to about Firefox here. We are running version 89.0.2. So this is quite an older version of Firefox. I think Firefox has just updated to Firefox version 95. But in the install, in the, sorry, in the update that we just had down here, I'm assuming it will be updating this straight up to the up-to-date version. Let's see if we can find it here. I think I just saw it. Yeah, here it is. Updating to version 95. So the update is right there ready to go. So you can't really get too annoyed at that. Let's navigate into some of the other 
bits of software that came with us. Don't forget we did install multimedia codecs, so we're going to have a few extras as well. So in accessories, you just have your usual stuff. We have a uh, task manager, a GUI task manager that comes with Linux Mint, which is quite nice, quite akin to what task manager would be in the Windows. You've got your CPU usage, memory usage, and the tasks that are running in the background. Pretty self-explanatory there. A rhythm box for music, picks to view images on your hard disk, or external devices, Thunderbird Mail, which is an email client installed on the system. So if you're using something like, I don't know, a, a Yahoo email, Sky email, something like that, you can log into it through Thunderbird Mail and get your emails through there. We have a text editor. Now let's see what type of text editor this is. So this is quite... Okay, so we have a default dark mode, which is quite nice. Let's go to help and about. Let's see what this is. This is XED. So I've... I've never actually used this or heard of this, but I'm assuming it's a text editor that comes default with um, some versions of XFCE, maybe. Or maybe it's just a Linux Mint specific thing. Uh, printers. Now, a lot of you Windows users will be very, very impressed with printer driver management in Linux. It's as easy as a click and go to print something, whereas with Windows, and I've had this experience personally, getting a printer to work, getting a printer to work on Windows is difficult, tedious, and takes forever, but it is possible. It just makes you want to die. Whereas with Linux Mint, you just click on the printer, connect, and print. It's literally that easy. I don't understand how Windows gets it so wrong. But now, let's navigate over to the Software Manager. Now we have two, we have Synaptic Package Manager and we have Software Manager. So let's click on the Software Manager. All right, so here we go. So we have a pretty nice looking Software Manager. Where on the front page we have things like Google Earth, Minecraft, WhatsApp, Spotify. You know, some pretty basic programs that you probably would want though. A recommendation, do not install the, do not install Minecraft Launcher through the software manager, it is best to navigate over to the official Minecraft website and download it straight from there. They even have specific versions for Arch Linux, so if you're running an Arch based distribution you can start through there, and if you're running an Ubuntu based system like we are, which is itself based on Debian, you're going to want to navigate over there and download that specific one. So installing things through this is pretty easy, so if you want to install for example MPV you just click on it like that, and install. It's as easy as installing something through your through your phone, you know, through the App Store, through the Google Play Store. It's just as easy as that. So if we now get over to the update manager, I think we'll update now and see how long it takes. We do have quite a few different packages that need updating, so we're just going to install the updates now. That's fine with me. Enter your password again. And just wait a little bit for them to install. Alright, so it seems to be hanging on this final little step on our installing the updates, but there we go. Now we have to do a reboot, and then our system will be fully up to date with all the software installed. So I'm just going to navigate over to here and click restart. Get up to the login screen, type in your secure password, and here we are in a fully up-to-date Linux Mint system with the XFCE desktop environment. Alright, so let's open the terminal and see what kind of stuff we have going on. So let's full screen this. Do we have NeoFetch installed by default? We do. This is actually one of the first, if not the first, Linux distribution I've seen that has NeoFetch installed by default. Something to upload to uh, whatever social media site you may use. Now, what about HTOP? Now, if you don't know, HTOP is a slight, is a, it's a kind of task manager, but in the terminal. So, in fact, I'll show you. So if we do sudo apt install HTOP. Now, Linux Mint is also good for beginner Linux users, because it gives you tips like this. It tells you, 
hey, if you're looking for a program, it's not installed, but you can install it with this command. Very, very useful for people who may not know what the command is to install a program. So we're going to want to just click enter there, enter our password. And it should be very, very quick install. And there we go. I haven't even changed any mirrors, so I'm still downloading it from the default mirror, and it's just that quick. Though HTOP is a very small program, so well, relatively small anyway. So here you're going to get a list of all of the different tasks that are running in the background, as well as memory usage, CPU usage, and swap usage if you ins if you install a swap. You can also see up here we get a total tasks running at 84, with an uptime of 2 minutes and 23 seconds. Not too bad. I'm going to hit Control and C to end that task there. And what about Vim? Do we have Vim installed? We don't, okay. But for beginners, if you're gonna to need to edit something in the terminal, you're probably best off using Nano. And I, th I think Nano comes with Linux Mint. Yeah, Nano does. So it gives you all of the different key maps at the bottom, so that helps you with getting started if you're not too sure where the keys are. Because with Vim, if we install Vim, it doesn't give you a list of the key bindings. So we're going to install Vim with sudo apt install Vim, just like that, and hit enter. Hit enter again for the default Y, which is yes. Now Vim is 34 and a half megabytes in size, so as expected, this will take a little bit longer than HTOP, but as evident right here, it's still blazingly fast. Now we can enter Vim and enter the file name here, and you can type to your heart's content. So, what about the kernel version? Let's have a look. So we can see the kernel version and a couple of the bits of information through the command uname space dash a. So it's going to give us the name of our system, the Linux kernel version, the date and time, and stuff like that. So uname dash a is just a nice little, nice little command for you to get the general gist of your system. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's about it for the terminal really. If you're using Linux Mint, you really don't have any obligations to use the terminal unless you're doing something a bit more advanced or a bit more out of the road, so to speak. But you can really get away with using Linux Mint, not even interacting with the terminal at all. So, But I do recommend getting to grips with the terminal in an environment like Linux Mint because Linux Mint is very safe. It's also quite, st it's quite a stable distribution from what I've experienced. It's been one of the more stable ones I've personally used as a daily driver. And most of the software here just seems to work, though inevitably using Linux you will encounter roadblocks, but at the same time using Linux you need to build up your tolerance to that and you need to fix those problems. So let's hit over to Firefox. So now with the update, we should have updated Firefox to the latest version. We can go down here, go down to help, click on about, and we are on version Firefox 95, so we are fully up to date now with our Firefox browser for all of your browsing needs. Still have the default uh, Linux Mint start page load up here, but nothing too concerning there. D DuckDuckGo is the default search engine, but of course you can change that through the Firefox settings. So if we navigate back down over to the start menu here, we can just have a quick overview of all of the applications that come pre-installed with Linux Mint with the multimedia codecs installed. So pretty much to sum it up, you have all of the basic programs you'd need day to day. So we have a document scanner here, we have a printer application, you have a disk. Also, if you were putting another drive or something like that, it will appear on this disks section here. So you can see the name of it, the size of it, the amount of partitions on it, and stuff like that. We also have a Bluetooth tool, we have um, something called Celluloid, which is used to play movies and videos, kind of like Windows Media Player. We have a Disk Usage Analyzer, which you can click on and it will take you to your, the amount of disks, the amount of disk space you've used, so, and you can click on that and you can see which, which directories take up the most space and stuff like that, so. Get a nice little pie chart here, pie chart-esque thing. You also get firewall configuration and hex chat, which I think is a kind of IRC chat line kind of thing. I've never used it, but 
it's there if you're into that kind of thing. You've got driver manager, which, uh, like I said, is especially important if you're using an NVIDIA GPU. And we also have the LibreOffice installed by default. So LibreOffice is Libre's version of the Microsoft 365. But if you don't like LibreOffice, you also have the option to install OpenOffice or Apache Office through the software management tool or through the terminal. We have a mouse and touchpad thing there. We have, an, we have a mouse and touchpad application there. So if you want to change DPI settings or something like that, you can there. We have a passwords and keys application here. You have a power manager here, so in case you're running on a laptop, you can change different options there. Rhythm box, which is a music player, pretty self-explanatory really. A screenshot tool, which takes a screenshot of your screen. The task manager, time shift, which we went over at the beginning. A USB image writer, which is quite useful. Uh, Vim, which is what we installed. And yeah, that's about it. That's about it for all the applications that came pre-installed on the system. So pretty nice overall. It's a pretty nice Linux distribution overall. And to be honest, I think it is one of, if not the best Linux distribution for people who have only ever used Windows in their life and they're thinking of experimenting with Linux but want to get to grips with the GUI or certain terminal commands first. Now I do have a review on my channel of Zorin OS, which is another Windows user-esque oriented Linux distribution that I do think you should check out if you're interested in hopping over to Linux from Windows. But that's about it. It's a very basic, very self-explanatory Linux distribution, and I think you'll get along with it very, very nicely, even if you've only ever used Windows. Please subscribe if you do enjoy this type of stuff. I do Linux distribution reviews sometimes, installations, but mainly Linux-based videos. So if you're interested in Linux, make sure you subscribe. And like the video if you did like it, find it useful, or just entertaining. Do you disagree with me on anything I've said? Comment it down below, I'd love to hear it, and I'll make sure I respond to you, and we can have a conversation about it. So again, thank you very much for watching, I hope you have a wonderful day, and I will see you in my next video. Have a good day, stay safe.